in our ecosystem, all organisms are interdependent. Either it's the king of the jungle or a tiny red mite. In nature, all mortals have a part to play. The blocks of our ecosystem are stacked in such a way that if one of them vanishes, the mighty structure fails. The tremors are felt at the top to those who salvage the system, support this system and are also a slave to this system, the humans. And they fail. When we started this uh, idea of understanding the amphibians of NCR, we wanted to see how many species we have in this particular city. That is why we decided to find at least one good place where we can actually find all of these frogs together because amphibians have a very limited sort of requirement. You know, they want a clean water body in a, you know, with, with some good patches of vegetation around it and some terrestrial space where they can move around, you know, for their activities. Our field site was in the interior of the entire Aravali, that patch. And we had to walk for about two kilometers, more than that, to reach our field site where we had a big pond. We did find frogs, but there was a lot of trash. We were anticipating that we cannot work with all of that trash around, so we have to collect it and we have to get rid of that. Amphibians were the first vertebrates to colonize land, even before the dinosaurs. The dinosaurs were the biggest beasts ever to storm the earth, but it were the tiniest frogs that survived the extinction and filled the ecological crater. The frogs have proved that they aren't soft creatures, but it is only now that they are dying so quickly. Frogs and toads live on land as well as on water, but the man-driven world has become so bad, they wish they could fly away. We've been able to uh, hear calling meals of Euphrictus, which have been in that huge pond in our field site. And they have been the only ones calling so far. Um, we've also spotted bullfrog, but they're not in their breeding form. Now we are trying to understand uh, whatever uh, diversity we have in this park. We are pretty sure that we actually have uh, eight species of amphibians in this park. Uh, we have two species of toads, we have six species of uh, frogs. Today on our way back, we heard the call of a rather inconspicuous frog, which we were not really expecting, the burrowing frog. Very exciting. The uh, burrowing frog, whose numbers are quite limited. I mean, they, they, they actually are a species which are widely distributed, but you know, they have always been very elusive. All that is born must die, and all that is dead is food. The eagle might fly high, but one day it will fall back on Earth, where it will be taken apart and put back into the ecosystem, feather by feather, nail by nail. One of the most important things is they are one of the biggest pest controllers. We all have problems of uh, so many insect pests all around us and they are one of the most important part of the food chain which supports higher animals like birds and also consume lower animals like insects uh, which also and keeps their population on check. So we also need amphibians in large numbers. The frogs are a very sound note in the ecological symphony but now the music is turning ugly. There are over 5,000 species of frogs throughout the world, and over a third of those are endangered. Even every, any, any normal person, if you talk to, who lives in Delhi, they, you, they can easily tell you that they used to see frogs maybe a few years back, and now they don't see them. All the habitats here, if you go to, you know, whether you go to South Ridge, Central Ridge, North Ridge, any protected area also, uh, most of these water bodies are highly polluted, and you know, they can't sustain sensitive animals like amphibians. Presence of frogs always gives us a primary idea what kind of conditions the water body has. I just want to cite an example of Sanjay 1, which is also an area which has been, which has faced a lot of restoration 
which can possibly tell us how sensitive because if you go and look at that site it is an ideal habitat for amphibians but still we don't find them the reason is very simple the water is water quality is not adequate for amphibian survival in that particular area humans alter and destroy the amphibian habitat by logging forests training swamps and covering streams with no room to spare a frog could expect to live out its amphibian life in peace around a green agricultural field. But humans are creative creatures and they very easily find uglier ways to kill and harm their ecosystem. Jaise main dikhi main dawai padi तो वो देखो चाचा नहीं पहले फूलती है हाँ पहले फूलती है हाँ। और उसके बाद फिर वो मर जाती है मर जाती है ना हाँ तो वो त्वचा तो खराब हो जाती है ऊपर के और बहुत ही तो ऐसी है कि नहीं कि दवा पड़ी और मात्रा भर नहीं पड़ पाई तो कहो अर्धबेहंग हो जाए एक्सेसिव यूज ऑफ पेस्टिसाइड डिस्ट्रॉय बायोडाइवर्सिटी ईच पेस्टिसाइड क्लास कम्स विद स्पेसिफिक सेट ऑफ एनवायरमेंटल कंसर्न Amphibians have permeable skin that is highly absorbent making them extremely susceptible to pollutants and pesticides. Oh mari hai sab aur mari hai ka kyunki aap pure khad bhare ko pani mein dawai padi ha to ka marna to hai hi eat na sa khaye porat hai porat daad de to ghas jal jati aur aise methki jo hai aadmi ke liye nuksan dayak nahi na magar ab majboori jise ki hai khet mein ab dawa jise khet mein hai मरी submerged in the water and so when we were trying to push it all and we saw a trace of certain of some snake so our professor asked us asked us to back out and he went in himself and we all pulled it it was heavy to pull because there was mud on it and then we pulled it and then there were at least 10 snakes that just rushed out of that small space and then went all over the pond which is an amazing thing because it indicates that the food chain is intact it's in place there there's predator there's prey and it eventually translates into the health of an ecosystem and that's a really good news this site may not have been ideal habitat for amphibians but they have come back here because the area has been restored because you can all understand where i'm sitting right now was a mining site at some point of time but uh, after you know more than 10 years of efforts of restoration in this particular area we could possibly see many of these amphibians are living in this particular area probably because the habitat has been restored for this particular amphibians who might have been struggling to survive some time back when this activity was happening but right now you can see them in large numbers so this is one good indicator right if we try to restore or maintain the habitat we might actually see amphibians coming back Today it rained heavily, and there was a huge chorus at the first pond. When we went there, we saw the burrowing frog. They were all calling by the side of the pond. Huge number, and wow! A croak is the low, hoarse sound a frog makes. A croak is also another verb for death. So if you happen to find a frog near you, listen closely. It just might be croaking. 